Now we are into the third part of this analyzing sentiment of website comments in a web application using ML.NET model builder. So I strongly recommend you to first go through the first two parts because this is a series of uh, tutorials and each tutorial is based on the previous part. So please go through the first two tutorials if you haven't and come back to this tutorial. So in this tutorial, this is my follow up list of uh, social profile. So if you'd like to join me and follow me in any of these Twitter handle or Facebook, you're most welcome or LinkedIn network. And what we learn in this lecture, in this tutorial, we shall learn how to evaluate the model that we have created in the past lecture in the part two and add the code to make predictions in the following steps. Reference the train model, configure the prediction engine pool and create sentiment analysis handler. And we'll restrict us to the uh, this following code changes only and in the next part which will be the last part we we'll complete the coding part by preparing the web page with some javascript functions to make it ready to run the app and show the results okay so let's switch over to visual studio now now we have left it at the stage of evaluation we have already trained the model and we have gone through this next step to the evaluate and if I click the next step. Now let's add the model and necessary projects and references to the solution. Once added, open sentiment ML dot console app because two projects will be created. One of them is console app and another is a uh, class library to see how to consume your model. You can then copy the code from this generated console app to the app where you want to consume your model and make predictions. But we will uh, continue without actually working anything for the time being on console app. So click on add to solution. And you can see that immediately two more projects have been added. One is the console app and this is sentiment razor ML dot model is a class library project. Now again, I as I am going through this lecture and I am just walking through this lecture and explaining. So let's read out what we actually get from evaluating the model. Now the result of training step will be one model that has the best performance. In the evaluate step of the model builder tool, the output section will contain the algorithm used by the best performing model in the best entry, best model entry along with its metrics in the best model accuracy. Additionally, a summary table containing the top five models and the metrics is shown. So that was this. So here it has explored not five, but three, okay? Three algorithms. Now, coming back to the documentation, and if you are not satisfied with your accuracy metrics, some easy ways to try to improve model accuracy are to increase the amount of time to train. Like, you know, I have made it 30 seconds. You could probably make it 40 seconds or 50 seconds. Otherwise, select the code link to move to the final step in the model builder tool or use more data. Okay. Now I'll have to add the code to make predictions. All right. Now going through this further, we have seen that this console app is here. So just quickly, if we go through this model builder.cs, class has been created and it creates the ML context, machine learning context and build the training pipeline, train the model, okay, evaluate quali quality of model and save the model, okay. And it is building, this method is building the training pipeline and it is doing the train model, okay. And this is also program classes having some code. However, we are into this ML.model. This will be used because we'll be showing the sentiment analysis on a website, ESP.NET Core, rather than a console application. So it's already this code is created for you. You didn't have to write a single line of code. That is the beauty of this model builder. You don't need to be an experienced ML.NET or machine learning programmer to do this. And it says that only the sentiment razor mod dot model project is used because predictions will be made in the sentiment razor web application rather than in the console. Although the sentiment razor ML dot console app won't be used for scoring, it can be used to retrain the model using new data at a later time. Retraining is outside the scope of this tutorial though. Now back to my solution and the project and then right click and I have to add a NuGet package, manage NuGet package. And I have to browse for uh, this project and this package microsoft.extensions.ml okay so i have got this and i'll install this one 
Now I have installed this Microsoft.extensions.ml project. Okay, so it's an installed project, and I'll close this window. Now what I'll do is I will close all these windows, uh, close all tabs, and I will go back to the sentiment reserve, sentiment reserve project and click on the startup file, and then I'll have to use two libraries, system.io and microsoft.extensions.ml and sentiment ml.model in order to be able to use this uh, class library. Okay. Now I will create a global variable to store the location of this model, model path. Okay. And then I will create a, a function or a method which I will explain in a bit. And first I will copy it from the tutorial and I will then explain. So I've got a method copied on my clipboard, which I will paste after the configure method, and that is to get the absolute path. So I, by feeding the relative path, you can get the absolute path of the model file. Okay. Um, as you can see here, the model file is stored in the build directory alongside the assembly files of your application. To make it easier to access, create a helper method, get absolute path after the configure method. So that is what I have done. And let me try to explain this. Now, this is, it is a file info object and it give it a name, um, data root, new file info method. And it initializes a new instance of the file info class, which acts as a wrapper for a file path. Now this is taking from the metadata reflection type of uh, program dot assembly dot location. And it finds the root of the file data root at this location through uh, assigning new file info and passing the um, assembly dot location. Okay, so it gets the full path or UNC location of the loaded file that contains the manifest. So this is this will give you the full path. And then assembly folder path is data root dot directory dot full name. So you have got the to the root of the data folder, and then from there you get this directory instance, this directory property, and then full name uh, property will get you the full path of the directory of the file and then and in another string variable full path this is path dot combine assembly folder path and the relative path so that will give you the full path so path dot combine combines two strings into a path and this will give you the full path and you will get the full path returned to you okay so hope you understand it actually by combining these two paths assembly folder path which gives you the uh, name of the directory at the data root and the relative path you'll get the full path so this can be clear by actually um, putting a breakpoint over here and see what is the full path okay that we can do later now here i have used the get absolute path method that we have copied and pasted and explained a little bit uh, this one and to set up this model path and passing this parameter ml model dot zip now I have already not told ml model dot zip is the best model that is predicted after the training period is over after the training uh, model training is over so this is the best evaluated model and it is being actually created as a zip file over here next i will configure the prediction engine pool in the configure services method by adding this code services dot add prediction engine pool and i'll give a model input and model output Okay, model input, let us see what is model input. So go to definition. So this was the model input, it was created. And what is the path of this model input class is uh, that model, the model that is already created, model input, okay. So model input and model output classes was automatically generated when the model was trained with the model builder. So here, these two classes are input into the add prediction engineering pool and uh, what does this do? It adds a prediction engine pool builder to the service collection and uh, dot from file from the model path, which we have actually uh, created over here, which we have assigned by getting the absolute path uh, and uh, giving it a parameter of ml model dot zip. So this is actually setting a model path. Okay, so it is configured into the configure services method. Now we have got till this point. So we have added the predict, add prediction engine pool to the services class of this configure services method. We have, now, predictions will be made inside the main page of the application. Now, as I will go through this lecture, I will explain and then copy to save time. And um, 
Okay, hopefully that arrangement is all right with you. So here we'll open the index.cshtml.cs file located in the pages directory and add the following using statements. Okay, so going back to the Visual Studio. So index in this sentiment razor project um, pages index.cshtml.cs page and I will use this using statement. So we'll use sentiment razor ml dot model and Microsoft extensions dot ml. And in order to use the prediction engine pool configured in the startup class, which we have done earlier in this stage here, what you need to do, you have to inject it into the constructor of the model where you want to use it. So we have to add a variable to reference the prediction engine pool inside the index model class. So we'll copy this and go to the index model class and I will just paste this over here. Okay, private read only. So this is a, this has to be uh, injected into the constructor, which is this one. Actually, I don't need this part. I, I will get rid of this part here. And also I don't need to inject the I logger. Right, so instead I'll inject this one. So what I will do is, um, I'll just copy this part. All right, and just get rid of the underscore over here. And then uh, I hope you know dependency injection. So we are injecting the dependency prediction underscore prediction engine model, which is declared over as a variable equals to the passed in constructor to the uh, passed in uh, dependency to the constructor. So prediction engine pool. Right. So this is called constructor injection. So going through step by step in the next step is we have to create a method handler that uses the prediction engine pool to make predictions from user input received from the web page. So below the on get method. So now you have got if you come back to the code, you've got this on get method. So below this on get method, you have to create another method for which the code is here. I will copy this and then paste this. So what this code, uh, what this method is doing on get analyze statement. Okay, so it is getting uh, from the query a string. Okay, and then see what we what we'll do next. So inside this on get analyze statement method, return neutral sentiment if the input from the user is blank or null. If the user doesn't return anything, it's just a blank or null. If it doesn't write anything, then this has to be actually the first line of the code if string dot is null or empty text if this text is empty or null then return content neutral it is neutral okay so we understand everything um, bit by bit so please have patience and go through this lecture fully now given a valid input create a new instance of the model input so copy and we are still constructing our method so var input equals new model input and sentiment text equals text and what is this model input this is the model input class so it is automatically generated remember again so model input class which are the columns uh, sentiment sentiment text and logged in okay so go back and the next line is uh, use the prediction engine pool to predict sentiment so we are making use of this prediction engine pool here which was injected as a dependency uh, as a constructor and uh, constructor injection and we are using this prediction engine pool to predict okay the predict method run prediction pipeline in one example using a prediction engine from the pool right so and nextly convert the predicted bool value into toxic or non-toxic with the following code and then finally we are not done yet i will not be able to show you the running application which will be completed in the next lecture return content sentiment now it all the squiggly lines are gone so it is returning the content now let's build this application to see if it works okay if it builds all right and we'll leave it at that control shift v to build it unable to remove directory so i guess this is done if i clean the solution and then rebuild this should be all right move out of dropbox 
yeah and then rebuild it or build the solution again Will it be succeeded? Fine. So I'm going to leave it at that. So in this lecture, we have seen that you know uh, how we evaluated the model and then added some code to the stage that it actually uh, references the trained model and it, we have configured the prediction engine pool and created the sentiment analysis handler. So next lecture we'll be preparing our web page or a web application to show the actual sentiments and we'll have to write some. JavaScript function to do that. Thank you.